Hey friends, and welcome back to A Simple Truth. Now today is Mark 11 and then John 12. If you remember, we are coming off the story of Zacchaeus, uh, the parable of the Minas, Minas, I'm still not sure if I'm saying that right, uh, Jesus cleansing the temple, Jesus weeping over Jerusalem, and then also the triumphant entry. So what are we going to cover today? Uh, the triumphal entry, uh, the withering of the fig tree, the clearing of the temple, uh, the idea of forgiveness and prayer. And it's really cool that I'm seeing this and I'm wondering how much uh, God is speaking to me here because I keep running into this idea of forgiveness and prayer. Um, so yeah, so we'll get a look at that. Uh, Jesus authority questioned, which we've seen another account of this earlier. Um, Jesus anointing. And then something we haven't seen is the plot to kill Lazarus. Um, and then finally, the idea of walking in the light. So all of that within Mark 11 and John 12. So Mark chapter 11. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied, find a colt tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, what are you doing loosing the colt? And they spoke to them, just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road. And others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And the disciples heard it. So they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temple. Then he taught, saying them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of thieves. And as the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his teaching. When evening had come, he went out of the city. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering what he said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that these things that he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask them when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, for, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Then they came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him. And they said to him, By what authority are you going and doing these things? And who gave you this authority to do these things? But Jesus answered and said to them, I will also ask you a question, then answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? Answer me. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, then he will say, Then why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, they feared the people, for all counted John to have been a prophet indeed. So they answered and said to Jesus, We do not know. And Jesus answered and said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. And then John 12. 
Then, six days before a Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead, there they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil and spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, Let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you will always have. Uh, for the poor you will have with you always. But me you do not have always. Now a great many of the Jews knew that Jesus was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake, but that they also might see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also because on account of him many Jews went away and believed in Jesus. The next day a great multitude that had come to the feast when they had heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. The disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that he had done these things or, and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, you see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now, <clears throat> there were certain Greeks among these who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn Andrew told Philip and Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. <clears throat> then a voice came from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had been thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all the peoples to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. The people answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said to them, A little while the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. But although he had done so many signs before him, they did not believe him, that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because Isaiah had said again, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. These things Isaiah said when he saw the glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Then Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me, and he who sees me sees him who sent me. 
I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him. For I did not come into the world, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges give him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. So from that one, um, the the idea that Lazarus was sought to be killed, I thought was really interesting. Um, and I, I think that kind of goes along a little bit with what Jesus is saying here of saying, hey, if you lose your life for my sake, um, then you will find it. And at this point, Lazarus's life is a testament actively and passively, right? I assume if he's following Jesus at this point that he's trying to do what Jesus is commanding. Uh, but his very life is a testament because he was born again. He was raised from the dead, right? Um, so maybe born again in that instance isn't the right word, but he was raised from the dead. Uh, and so he kind of has a new lease on life. He kind of has a new life because of Jesus, just as we do. Um, if you profess Christ died and crucified for our sins and risen and as the son of God, then you have that. So our life needs to be that testament. But don't be surprised when this evil comes against you. Um, yeah, I just thought that was really, really interesting that this these evil men sought to um, sought to silence that witness. Um, and yet. Jesus is Jesus was still glorified um, and that witness still uh, still continues to this day. So anyway, that is what I took from uh, today's reading. As always, friends, thanks so much for joining and have a great rest of your day. We'll see you.